Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome coming to my talk about blazing accessibility basics, about making accessible websites in blazing. So, first of all, what are we all going to do today? What are we going to talk about? We're going to start with this little introduction. I want to tell you about what is accessibility, what is inclusion, I'm going to guide you to the poor principles. And poor comes from perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So the biggest part of my presentation, I will talk about perceivable applications, operable applications, and blazer and understandable and robust blazer apps. And of course, I'm going to thank you all for coming to this hopefully nice talk. First of all, who am I? I'm Danny De Klerk, um, and I'm in Belgium. I am president, IT coach, and developer at DDSoft, a non-profit I founded myself. I am Microsoft MVP, and my hashtag is always dreaming as believing, hashtag dreaming as believing, and I even let build some t-shirts about it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter with my Twitter handle, at Danny De Klerk. So, to start with. What, in fact, is accessibility and inclusion? Accessibility is all about people with all needs, so normal needs and special needs, can access the internet, can access all daily life activities. In fact, they can access all areas. Really important. And specific in times of COVID, and that's been, it's over right now because we are at, at the in-person conference again. So let's say it's over. But if there are restrictions about what you can do and what you can't do, if these restrictions are not accessible for everyone, so not for people, for example, with disabilities, then they are more limited. They can be more isolated than people who can read. For example, people with those disabilities can read. Yeah, you cannot go to there, but you can go to there. Yeah, but if you can't read it. Um, and Microsoft really has a great methodology and a great vision. It's more a vision, the, the inclusive design. And they really say inclusive design is a methodology born out of digital environments that enables and draws on the full range of human diversity. Most importantly, that means including and learning from people with a range a wide range of perspectives. And they say the following, you should recognize exclusion, then you solve it for one, and then extend for money, you learn from diversity. So your product gets better and better with the inclusive design, and people are not left out of the boat. They had a whole document about it, a whole, a whole specification, and this at the link below. And one point of it I want to talk about, they use the persona spectrum. It's not the only thing they use, but they use the persona spectrum. And they said that each category of disabilities that you see here, you can have permanent, temporary, or situational. I'll give you an example, touch. Permanent can be someone paralyzed or somebody with only one arm. Is it born or is it by an accident? It doesn't matter. Or you can have temporary an arm injury. For example, you go skiing, you fall in the snow, snow and you break your arm, for example. Or it could just has be a new parent holding the toddler or the baby on their hand. So they really do say it's not always the big people with disability of the big use of the disabled people, some people take, but no, everyone can be in the situation. The same kinds of seeing, you can have a person who is blind, who has a disability blindness or a very low vision, or it can be just a person suffering cataract or have an infection on their eyes, a very big infection on the eye, maybe he need to close one eye and only can use the other eye, or it just can be a detractor driver. I'm not doing the politics and the fact how much the practice drivers should go to my website. It's not the point of today. I don't drive a car, so <laughs> I can say everything. Uh, next to the Microsoft um, inclusive guidelines, 
you also have the WCAG. And the WCAG comes from the World Wide Web initiative from the V3C, so the Web World Wide Web Consortium. And they really, so the, 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 what it is, is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG, is developed through the V3C project in cooperation with individuals and organizations around the world, with a goal of providing a single stared standard for web content accessibility that means, that meets the needs of individuals, organizations and governments internationally. And as I already teased before, they work with the poor principles. Again, the same, all the standards, all the facts, you can go via the link at the bottom of the slide. And of course, if you make accessible websites, you need to test them. And you need to do all the unit tests and integration tests. We could learn about three days of NDC. You saw a lot of ways of testing your code, testing your applications. Today, we're going to talk about testing for accessibility. Um, testing for accessibility, you do that with the Microsoft Accessibility Insights. There are other tools too, but I choose today, I really love Microsoft, and it's a, bl a Blazor talk, so a Microsoft Technology talk, so I choose to do it on, uh, with Accessibility Insights. Um, today, I'm only going to show you it, it's a browser plugin. I'm going to use it via Edge, a browser plugin. But even with the Microsoft Accessibility Insights, you have a lot of uh, versions. You have it for desktop application, and you even have versions that you can uh, include in your CI/CD pipeline. Is it um, GitHub Actions? Is it Azure DevOps? So you really can make it in the plugin or the then another, so another part of the accessibility insight, so all loosely component, then you really can make that it fails the build or give a warning if the website is not accessible. So it's so great that you can do this. Uh, so, as I said, for today, I'm going to show it basic because it's, uh, it's not a continue integration talk, so we're going to use it with Edge. And I, of course, have an application for you today, and I'm going to run the application. But I need you to, okay, I just run the application. And I do a little cheating, of course, because you can't do live talks without cheating. But the, we, the, the one real uh, something that you need to know is if you cheat, you need to say it that you're cheating. So first, the first thing, oh, the, the first thing is not a cheat. I'm just going to, because I use difficult different screens, I'm going to move the whole stuff to the projecting screen. Okay. Okay. But no, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy the, copy the URI because I work in, for development in another version of my browser of Edge than my production one. And the tool that I need to show today is on the other version, is on my other browser. So I'm going to open the other browser, so my, let's say, production browser, okay. And I just need to paste here the URI. I just, that's just how I do it, how I build, that's your choice, it doesn't matter. I copy the thing, I enter, it's going to load. And then I have the accessibility insights, the beautiful heart and then first we're going to do today the fast pass and you see do i have uh, the the first thing is the automatic um, the automated steps and then you see already i have zero felt instances of course i'm not going to give you a demo but a felt accessibility check let's imagine and then I'm going to do step stops. I can show the visual helper. And then one of the things of accessibility we'll see today is about tabs. How is, how is it to navigate to your website? And it's all you can demo very visually. So you see the, 
the circle here, the, the pink circle, if I now to tap on my device, it's going to show me how I move the steps that I take, the, the steps that I need to make. By example, I can go back. Oh, I can go back. No, and I press enter. By a keyboard, and I can, I need to open the tools again if I'm on another page. So I'm going to. the insight and I restart because I'm another page it's page independent it's page dependent and now I can again via tap so this is the talk of today and I can talk about other talks that I'm giving by example I'm pressing enter and I'm again so so you can test for accessibility and something is really great a lot of things are really great not something um, that is that uh, the Microsoft Accessibility Insights are, com are complying with two things. They comply with the full uh, inclusive design lines of the vision of Microsoft. And of course, they completely align with the poor systems of the WCAG. So it can be complied. You can test it that they comply both. Isn't that amazing? So the poor principles. Pogs, as I said, is come for perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So let's talk about uh, what's the difference between both. Perceivable means can everyone access the content on the website? Operable, can everyone operate the website? Understandable, can everyone understand the content that is on the website? Robust, is your website robust? Is everything working well and fluid? And then you say oh, perceivable and understandable. Isn't that the same? Isn't that confusing? Okay, so I made a statement. Why and how the difference is? While perceivable means that everyone can access the content with different tools, understandable means that everyone should be able to understand the content. So you can, in fact, access content that you don't understand. Then it's perceivable. But to understandable, you also need to be able to understand the content. So, start the first thing, perceivable Blazor apps. So here, I, under WCAG, you have the facts, you have the steps, the checklist that you need to make. So what do we need to build in our application to build perceivable applications, Blazor applications? So, what they said is, you need tax alternatives for non-text. In HTML, that means provide alt text for images. But, if you work with the model, that also will mean in your blazer, and include the content or the descriptions for the alt in your model. As you saw at the demo, you need, they need something to be there to be described. Content can be presented in different ways. In HTML, use the HTML5 standard and also use a modern UI framework. Are you using Blazor or are you using... Um, there was a great talk uh, yesterday about, <laughs> about Tailwind CSS, but if you use combined HTML5 and the modern UI framework, you are on the good way. You will need some to do some tweaks, but you are on the good way. Fonts and clear fonts. Be sure that the text is big enough. There's nothing more annoying and nothing, there are less accessible things, but it's really annoying and less accessible if the font of your website is too small. How many websites do you see with a very small font? So they all assume that everyone sees nine or 10. Use a standard, so don't use a very specific self-made font by a graphic designer. You know, they love, they love to make custom fonts, the graphic designers. But if you use the standards, you are more sure that they comply with accessibility standards. So the fact that the more standards you go the, the, in the fonts, the more that they comply for accessibility. By the way, it's not a joke, but Comic Sans MS is one of the most hated fonts by designers, but it's proven it's one of the most accessible fonts. By example, for people with dyslexia or learning disabilities. So, Maybe we need to think about trade-offs. 
I don't know. There are other uh, accessible phones, but I wanted to note that the thing about Comic Sans MS because sometimes it's fun to smash down holy houses just for fun to make the world more accessible. Another thing really important is color is not the only way for conveying information. So what do you need to do for that? Use an atheristic for error items. Show an exclamation mark when danger. And use words as delete, confirm. So you shouldn't only use a gray uh, or a red or a green button without text. You can do it. And there's a whole vision about red and green and the color blindness. It's, it's amazing. By example, red and green is one of the but it's one of the most well-known colors that you can't distinguish with the, for, with the most known version of a form of a color blindness. But yeah, my way to do trade-off is one of the most easy to recognize colors for people with learning disabilities. So colors and accessibility is a lot of fun. And by the way, I'm working also about the talk just about colors because all the the, um, there's funny things about the trade-offs and the strange things. Um, but always, if you combine things like in images and text and colors, you will find the Holy Grail. It's a combination. In fact, the Holy Grail and accessibility is just a combination of things. Okay. If you follow the WC key uh, standards, you need to be resizable up to 400%. Oh, first we have a problem that we need to tackle. If you use standard bootstrap templates, so now I'm going to talk about bootstrap. I didn't test this with Thailand CSS. If you use the standard bootstrap template, the problem is the menu becomes invisible. Okay. The solution I found, I'm, I do a lot of accessibility, but I'm not the best graphic designer and I'm not a bootstrap expert. So the most easiest tweak is fully complete accessibility is an additional menu, at the footer menu, and then the HA, so at the foot nav component in Blazor. And then, of course, you can add the footer in the CSS and the needed markup in the HTML. Images are resizable. So, again, I'm not the greatest graphic designer in the world. A simple trick for this use bigger images that you need on your website, but do the right sizes, so make them smaller, I mean, with CSS but they can be resized. So, I told a lot, I told already way too much, it's time to give you demos. So it's about perceivable Blazor application. And for this, I am going to walk you, hmm. I'm going to walk about the structure of the application. So here, I have just, I have my functions. I need to duplicate my screen right now, otherwise it will not work. I have one thing, you know, um, everyone says um, you need to leading by example. Um, the screen here was not adjusted to duplicate because if you duplicate, you don't see the the good PowerPoint way. But I am my eyes are not as good as they should be. And if I just to expand, yeah, it will not work. If I need to show you Visual Studio, so just changing it very quickly, doing what I need. Otherwise, walking over the code will be not working for me. And then, okay, I just change. So I have not only my functions, I start first with the DD speaker. This is a model, and in the model, I have here my talks. And then in the talk, so I needed to add the alt text for the first slide. So here you see the first slide URI. And URI is for this project just coming from um, Azure Storage that you can do it. But then I need to add the alt. So I also have my services. 
So, and here I have my uh, I talk service. And my get talks, and here I have done my functions. What did I had in the functions? I have again my uh, my services, and I have for this demo my hard coded talk services. So I need, uh, and I also fill in in the service. I fill it in just hard coded because it's not about other functions and so. And it's a project that will grow while I'm working, while I'm experimenting. And the next step is not just much more, more UI, but more doing the server things. It will be other functions, but the most important thing that you include your first slide alt. So here you have the description of picture of the first slide of the talk, Blazing Accessibility Basics. And I said even what it's about with with a back background color, black background color, and white text, and decoration, and the text, what is about blazing accessibility basics. So, if you very important to accessibility and blazing, if you work with data and models, and you want to work with pictures, yeah, you well need the alt. So, it needs to be in the model. So, here I'm going to my, no, I'm going to the WASM application and I'm going to go to talk list. And if you go to the talk list, one of the first thing you see is it has a for each uh, with the talk items. So I have my talk item. Talk list item. And in the talk list item, I can just refer to here to the alt, the screen, so the source, I mean the SXC, so the so is the is the link that is going to my Azure storage. And then you have the alt is talk dot uh, first slide alt. So also what you have, as I said, the menu, I have my components and in my components, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. So um, so that was for the page um, talks. So in the page talks, I just have my talk component who rendering a talk, uh, a talk list with a talk components. So it's a talk list component rendering uh, the talk. Um, then you also have in my shared, I have the foodnav.wazer. And the foodnav.wazer is the, the navigation with a bit different the UI than the normal navigation. So this is a component in the shared folder. And I add it to my main layout. I add that I not only have the nav menu, but also have the food navigation. So you open the website. Here. I go to, I just can scroll right now up to more than 400%. Oh no, as I said, my top menu is away. So I can't move in my page anymore. Of course I can move because I added my food nav view. And then it's even more beautiful if I do it right now. You can do it further going to more UI because I just know me showed how important the navigation is. You also can say, for example, if it's less than that percentage, you can hide it. But why not having it always visible? You can't hide it and only show, make it responsible, for example, if the height is, uh, if the scrolling to is more than 300. But no, you are sure. So here you can also go to talks. I go scroll out a bit. You will see the menu is coming back. And if I go to help. developer tools, I can inspect. And you will see that this image will have my alt. And alt is very important for people who, is, who are using screen readers.
here I have if I go to talks and I click on I have my event so the event information is another subcomponent and here you also have a, an alt so I go to go to inspect again you will see again I have my alt and then that alt you also uh, you have my alt, but that alt is complete in another way. That alt says just here this is it. NDC Portos logo. So here I developed it a bit different because in my event class, in my model I mean, in my event model, you will see I don't have the logo you will guy alt. You have don't you have the logo alt. What did I done here to make it accessible? There's less content in Pokto. So on the slide content is really important that you describe what's on the slide. Here you really can say uh, that conference logo. So how I did it here, I have here, I have my event item. Dot Razor. And in the event alt uh, item, I just did. So my image is my event, the class is event logo. The soaked is the URI, and then my alt is a combination of my, so meta alt sign, I go into my model, the event's name, and then I made my Apostrophe's logo. So in that way, because there's no, there's less information needed to show to the people, but you can make it without the alt thing. And the image size, yes, really easy. Does not need, not need it really to show it. It's just uh, CSS and HTML. Uh, okay. So, so that was the stop. The first step of the accessible website is perceivable. So, right now you can say if you do this, they are perceivable. So, it's not only perceivable, Pog, it's also operable. So. Functionality is available from the keyboard. You saw already how to test it with the accessibility inside of Microsoft, but how to code it. In HTML, make a great use of the headings and just be aware of a good structure. In Blazor, it is really something that you do is working with a lot of components, with child components, maybe with child components. There's nothing bad with that. I did it self. Uh, by example, you have my talk list with the talk component, with the event component, but need to be aware of the structure, the headings, the data, really figure it out. And in your forum, so there's, of course, still a page that I didn't show to build up the, the tension, and that is the edit forum. If you work with the forum, mark it clear, it's really easy. Users have enough time to read and use the content. Okay. Blazor. The simplest thing, avoid timers. Yeah. Of course, it's all easy said and done. Sometimes you need timers. By example, I'm a big fan of Rammstein. I always, there's a reason I always say that at NDC conferences. I don't know why, honestly. Uh, um, but if you want to buy tickets for the concert, concert, if they don't use timers, then maybe people will let the browser open and that will block all the system. So if you really need to do that or by buying flights, there can be a reason that you will need to use timers. What I always suggest is provide just a button to ask, I made it accessible, to ask to extend the time. So let's say the timer is just say 30 minutes, provide a button, extend. It's a business case when you can do it or not, but pure on accessibility, avoid timers and make the button that you extend. But there's business case, they really need to think to extend, to, act, to, to extend, so I think it can work. Content does not cause uh, seizures or physical reactions. So people with epilepsy can have damages with strobe lights and light effects. People with anxiety can get very anxious if the content is moving too fast, or it's really exclaiming danger, 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 with the word of wet and flushing, exclamation mark, this can really trigger anxiety. Okay, how to do this? Luckily enough, we are not in the 90s anymore. You know the websites in the 90s? 
that was flushing everywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, but if you really want or you need to have flash content, by example, you are uh, one of your customers as a discotheque or a nightclub, maybe they still want to have some turn it on by default. They can turn it on by pressing, by example, the play button and even maybe also provide a warning sentence if the people click to turn it on. Warning now is going to flash. I'm not going to nightclubs anymore for a reason I don't know. Maybe it's aging. It has nothing to do with COVID. Even before COVID, I didn't went to nightclubs. So I don't know how, how their website is still there. But when I was somebody going to the nightclub, it was a very flashy thing. So <laughs> users can easily navigate and find content and determine where they are. Good basic HTML. So here is again header structure. And even you can, and I should choose with breadcrumbs. Or if you work with the link, the link at the bottom, you can colorize where you are. I didn't implement it for this demo because in case of time, it's case of um, working on it, but always good also if a new menu add breadcrumbs or colorize or put a line below where you are. Users can use different input modalities beyond the keyboard. Here's a good thing. With HTML5 and the web and the tools are right now, the most things are done for you. So it, it need already be very, very tricky thing that it's not that way. So good thing. So normally if you, if you put on a screen reader or a input devices, this already done for you. Not too much worries. So again, we're going to demo some things for you. And this about operable Blazor applications. Here. I'm going to the comments, so you can give comments right now. So it was already there. So please leave a comment. I use my first name. I use my dad because once, why should I comment about myself and my dad? I know he doesn't mind. So, uh, so um, D, D, I just use D. Uh, Johan, uh, Han, at DD soft. It's not true, honestly. <laughs> It, it just check the, the form of the email, but it don't check if the email is created. So my dad is now a, a cover of my nonprofit. It's not true, honestly, but <laughs> maybe I don't fill this in. Why should I do it right right now? If I want to show errors, so I press tab, I add the comment, boom. My comment text as required is already at the top. And it's also below on the form with my address stick, make it very clear there's something wrong. Okay. Great side. No, I can add. Uh, I need to. And my mom, see. Okay, so it's working. And I can go back. And the state is not saved. It's just about accessibility. So how did I build it into my application? So here I have my uh, just a very simple comment model. And in the, the modern way of working in .NET, you can uh, add your uh, requirement, your error messages, so you can work with your component model, data annotations on your model for all the messages. So I have my uh, error messages, I have a screen length and so, and I have my text, and I added an address tweak because I, it's more accessible. Okay. Then I have my components. 
here I have my comment form and my comment list. On the page components, so you first have the page components, and on that page it's really not rocket science. What you have, you just have a column separation, the biggest column with the comment list component, and then the comment form. The comment list is just the same as my list of talks, so no rocket science, just uh, showing a list of a comment item, combining everything together, gluing everything in the UI together. But here the most important thing is the comment form.wazer. So here we have our data annotations, uh, so that it's my edit form. And here uh, I also think about the validation messages and my error messages. That was about this project. I also said something about the menu items. So if you work with components and asset components, you need to be aware of the headers. And maybe you want to make it easier for yourself as a developer. And there I'm working on a new ID. It's already here. And that's um, most likely will be one of the first uh, projects I really want to um, publish as a, a, a GitHub um, project to use for everyone. And that is an, how to work with heading components. I just run another application, it's called DLife. I don't know why, but I always, I really love to make demos about things who make me happy. That's the reason, I, of course, I don't know why. And if you're in times of COVID, I was not always even happy. I think like most of us if we, with that. And I'm really working on demos about all the talks we'll need to come and all the trouble I I will still have and all the talks that really gives me a moral boost. So that's the, it's not just about shameless self-promotion. No, it's just what helps me. Uh, so, and here I have my future events. And here you will see the heading structure is really great without thinking too much about that. So first I prove it to you because they always said the proof of the pudding, where is it? In the eating. So I do my developer tools. First. Future event should be heading one, it is. Heading one here. The data, the talk is heading two. And here I have heading two and here it is. Uh, you don't have heading three here, but it's one and two. You see the future, it's, um, it's already my next talk because yeah, already today is already done uh, for this application because I didn't use timing. If I use timing, but yeah, it's just about accessibility principles, as I said. So what I did here, I met a separate component. I met my header component and that's not on GitHub yet, the header component, but that's really something that I really uh, want to uh, strip out and um, publish uh, separately. So here I have my DLive. I have my, and I already have my events.wazer, and in my headings events.wazer, I have my heading component. Here I switch on the H type. What is the H type? It is a helper that I have, just that you can choose between three, uh, the three, three levels of headings. And then you have um, also some code behind of the header, uh, so page behind behind the heading component, uh, just containing uh, the properties and showing the, the possibility to add the title. And then what do I have here? If I here I have my, for example, my talk list. What does this do here in the talk list? You are not adding an H1 or an H2, you are adding the heading. So header head is title heading and the, the, the so title heading. And here again, you, you pass it through the components, the headings with the H type. And then if you go to a single talk, it's again kind of the same. But the nice thing is here you only see the, the heading, but then if you want to have a nice view of it, you go to here to my, um, I go above, and I go to my uh, index.cs, uh, yeah, it's here just on the on future. Let's say, what do I have here on the future list? 
No, it really makes sense. If I'm looking to what's calling as a developer, okay. Talk list has the title heading as H1. And then the talk heading, so the talk, so the elements of the title list is containing H2. And that's the way that you really can structure it. So you really see in one eye, okay, the headings are cascading correctly in my components. Still some time. Okay, so we have perceivable, we have them operatable. They should be understandable too, and I said the difference already, so. The text is readable and understandable. Use easy language. On each language, you have basic version. If it's in Dutch, is it in English, you have simple versions and difficult version. Avoid jargon. Specifically, is it a public thing? Or sometimes, if you, if you develop for a, another company, then the jargon that they really know is okay, but then really no technical jargon. And if you make accessible apps for the old sites, try to use no jargon at all. And be descriptive in your error messages. So no show, error 404. Okay. Maybe, uh-oh, the page is not found. For that reason, it's way more descriptive. Content operates and appears and operates in predictable ways. Make a good usage of HTML5 headings and be aware of one headings and standard Blazor components, something I'm going, still going to demo you. Users are helped to avoid and correct message. So always use your phone validation and provide a cancel button. And it's also good or you should have a clear form too. So you can or cancel clear form instead only submitting and panicking, oh my god, what will happen right now? So, understandable demo apps, Blazor apps. And this we are going, uh, I just do it here on the, again on the future thing. Um, I do it here. I add a new component just for the fun. And I'm going to remove it directly, just that you show it. I have my headings, event.razor. I right click, pardon, add, and you write, um, basic component, the name doesn't matter because I'm going to delete it. And you will see automatically Blazor, so the Blazor of Visual Studio, the template assumed it's going to be H3. Why? So, and people need to, developers need to erase that, but if you don't think about it, you just want to give information, okay, there's a title, you are just going to give the title, yeah, it's not working, so. If you just change the text to... Uh, Who says it is the right heading? Maybe not. As I said, there's a component that we don't need. That just I was that was the point. Be aware of wrong uh, wrong uses of headings in the standard template. And this we don't need anymore. This one. So here I'm again on the, let's say the, the basic DD speaker template about my form. So you saw I use another application about the headings. Uh, yeah, we are doing it working in different application to try different things. Or am I the only one? It can be. Are you doing it? If you try new things, you just create a new application and you try this and this, or do you really doing everything perfect in the same application? <laughs> We all used to be perfect, you know. So here in my comment form, as I said, you should be helped uh, and there should be a um, cancel. So I can cancel, I can say Denny, for example, and I can cancel this. 
without having to panic. Oh my God, I just brought tickets for 2,000 euros and I can't cancel it anymore. Okay, then my credit card. And it's really easy to implement. Here I have in my uh, comment form that razor. I have my buttons and I, here I have my button type of research. And here is just some bootstrapper. So. so with the type of reset, you don't need an event handler. So here, if your button type in the in the uh, in the edit form uh, component, so if it's a child of the edit form, here you have the edit form, the event uh, 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 edit form. You will see that you don't need um, something to clear the form. It's all done directly. So. If I'm not lying to you, I shouldn't have an event handler uh, to to remove. No, I have my event callback to submit and to change, but I don't have code behind to erase the, the form. It's all already automatically done for you. So no excuse to don't make accessible websites because the most things or a lot of things are already done for you. Yeah, there are some things to still keep in mind. Oh, okay. Robust basic apps. Compant content is compatible with current and future users tool. So just use HTML5, try to use a great UI framework on top of that. And then here we are going to get some paradoxes because you can't have a tech talk without a paradox. You need to update often, but you shouldn't update too often. And if you update, if you really try thinking, I'm really updating often, don't do breaking UI changes if you do really update. If you're really thinking it's really often, we all know what paradoxes are. So the last demo is just walking again over the most important things over the application, uh, having everything for you. And then I have the time to think if I forgot to show something. So in our model, by example, here in our talk, we have our alt text um, in our functions. Um, and we got to add the alt text also. We need to fill it in. We don't have it into the, the event. Why not? Because in the event component, we, already, we use another way. And the event item, we just uh, event item. Amazing. We just uh, do it uh, via uh, the syntax, uh, the the basic syntax here. So command. Uh, so event logo. What we also did, we added a footer item. So in the shared, we have our footer navigation. Just another way of UI to show it at the bottom because, and we implemented it into the main layout. Why are we doing this if we are scrolling? Also here, if we are scrolling too big. Oh, it's got my menu. Oh, no worries. It's still here. You have your forms and you have the use of headings. You can do it just um, child component by child component. But of course, uh, it's also great that you work with another component like the heading components, does everything for you. And we have here, you also have the accessibility scanner that you can install as a Chrome plugin, uh, an Edge plugin, because it's all the same right now, because Edge is running on Chromium. It wasn't the same in the past, but now it's all the same. Uh, and then you can do your automatic checks. And you even can do, that I didn't show. You even can do a whole check. So if we close this, So I open it again. I can do also a assessment. And then you really have steps that you can test yourself. 
assistant. Okay, I start a new one. Yeah, I just did an assistant. <laughs> you cannot only do it on your, for your own websites. That's the thing. This plugins here, it just open. It's just on the open website, so you can try to do that on your own website. But it's not illegal to do that on other websites. So if you want to prove that something is not accessible, I didn't say that. I did an assessment on a website, an important website, not from a tech company, about a government. Somewhere in the world then. I don't say anything. We need to do it on our own website. Yeah, and but it's not illegal to do that, honestly. And even if you want to be a consultant for an accessible website, what we are doing at Nonprofit, making things accessible, you can go to somebody's website, scan it, and maybe send them a mail. They're doing a great job, of course, because everyone is doing accessibility to write. Maybe not, then we can help them. So this is like all funny things, and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's all open. It's just on the front end, so it's nothing illegal, it's nothing dirty. But you definitely should know that you have to use it for your own websites and web apps. In fact, that's the most important thing, I think, for most of us. And about, if I say your own, also about the project that you develop for customers if you work in consultant. So wrap up. You saw the need about accessibility. I, I talked about uh, people with disabilities. I talked about the WCAG, the Microsoft Inclusive Guidelines. I showed you how to test basic applications. Then I walked about the four principles and give you specific guidelines implemented in the Blazor language. Uh, and then we overworked everything again. We played the boat. I said some jokes about unaccessible websites. And I have some time for questions and I try to provide some answers for you. Yeah? Okay, how can you use a screen reader in Windows testing on websites? It's really easy. And I'm going to show you because that's a good thing ending five minutes earlier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the website again. Uh, the demo is still open. No. I need to make one excuse for you right now. I didn't plan to do this. And um, there's a rule. If you don't plan to do something, not everything needs to be okay. And what's not okay, that is in fact, because what we are doing at our nonprofit, we are also really helping people, and we are helping people in Flemish, so in Belgium, in the, net, in the Dutch speaking part of Belgium, and it's amazing confusing if you, like each developer, I'm an exception, install all your windows, all your device in English, but then a customer calls with their settings all in Dutch, so everything is in Dutch. If I should give a demo about uh, accessible tools at Windows, I need to work with the virtual machine, of course. But here, I try to translate. To hang locate is Dutch for accessibility. And then in accessibility, you should have... Uh, I have interaction, okay, keyboard. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's here, it's a, uh, the screen reader is here, it's a, uh, yeah, it's this, as I said. If I should really give a talk about that, of course, oh no, no. And no, I said, they asked me, do you need audio in this talk? And I said, no, because I wasn't planning to demo this. So, yeah. So there's no audio because it was an additional question, but so you can do this. And what you will see right now, you won't hear it because I didn't ask for audio. But if I set it loud enough, maybe people are sitting on the front row, like the people who are asking it, will hear it. And then I can minimize it. And I should be able to, to go to my website. I'm just doing a little shortcut. Why not? And I'm putting it here, so it should be able to read load. Only that, that should work. 
So, but you have it, uh, maybe you need to yeah, add the start page. It's selected. Oh, okay, I need to Windows key, control and enter. So I need to Windows key, control. So, what we learned today is definitely if people ask at the Q&A additional things and you are not sure, say yes, it's possible, but you need to watch it the next time. Other questions? Thank you all for attending this talk. <laughs>